Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. I have a super special guest. I have Paulino with us. He is the co-founder of H Plus Hospitals, We Care Pharma, and We Care Health. So anything we care, that's Paulino. And he essentially founded this back in the late 2009, and he's been doing that ever since, and essentially has helped create a it's like a bunch of healthcare facilities in Mexico, correct? Correct. And you, you started this organization and basically from ground zero, secured funding. So even though you are outside of America, you've done pretty much everything that any any entrepreneur would do starting out any sort of business. So super happy to have Paulino on. And I mean, where where did the um the idea for H plus and we care come from like, cause you were in the medical field beforehand. So there must've been something there that caused you to be like, well, I feel like I could do something a little bit better. Well, thank you, Josh. It's really uh, amazing to be here with you talking about this um, venture. Um, actually the idea, I, I was not working in, in, in healthcare before uh, my background started in finance back when I started uh, university. I started in Mexico City and I started working uh, just one year after I started university. I started working for a company called Grupo Electra, which is a really big company in Mexico and they're retailers. They have a bank uh, and they're focused on the base of the pyramid uh, selling uh, refrigerators and everything for your house on uh, with credit. Okay, so I started working there. They, 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 it's a big company. The holding of the company is called Grupo Salinas. They they also own um, TV Azteca and uh, Grupo Electra and Banco Azteca, bunch of companies in in Mexico. So I started working for them when I was 18 years old, working very closely with the with the CEO and the CFO of those companies. Uh, I worked there for almost five years. Then I finished university and I went uh, following my ex-boss from, from Gru Grupo Electra. I moved to Monterrey, which is um, um, a, um, a city in the north of Mexico. There I started working for, for a group of pharmacies that, that are called Benavides. Uh, there it's a it's a big group from it started in Chile and then it it it, it they bought a company in Mexico and they started this group, um, yeah, Benavides. So I worked there for for almost a year. I got married, went went on on a honeymoon, came back and my boss, which was the CEO, had a fight with the owner, so he was out. And then, so I had to look again for something, but I I kept following him and then I went to work for um for a glass company that they make uh, glass for, for cars or for construction uh, glass. Uh, it's a very big company in, 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 in Monterrey. It's called Vitro. And there I was also in finance doing a lot of um, looking for money for, for uh, refinancing of, I think we raised more than $1 billion in different um, terms for, for this company. Uh, so I really learned how to to tell a story, write a story, and and convince investors and bankers to give you money for something that that um, was already working or 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 for a big project, right? So refinancing a lot of debt um, during Electra. I also we also. I also worked in a, in a group that was called Unifon, which was the biggest startup for a telecommunications company in Mexico. That was around 2000, the year 2000. And there also we raised for this company around a billion dollars for the, it was the construction of the largest um, at that time uh, after uh, Telcel, which is the, the biggest um, company in Mexico. They, they wanted to build the largest cell phone company in Mexico. So we raised also going visiting investors and stuff. But uh, I, as I as I mentioned before, this, these were big companies. So 
it was it's very different to to raise money for a big company than to raise money for for your for your own company but at the end it's you have to tell a story you have to do spreadsheets you have to to write the business plan and all this stuff so after working for for vitro for a few years i went to to live in spain in barcelona for my mba so i did my mba in 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 barcelona at at the SA business school and after that, I I kept working for this glass company Vitro in 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 Spain. Uh, they had a very big um, uh, glass production um, for for construction in in Spain and in France and in Portugal. And I was heading I was I was uh, heading the um, the finance uh, department for for Europe. Uh, but in the meantime, this was around 2007, 2008, you know, the crisis came and uh, I was an, ex, an expat uh, with expat benefits in Spain. And so they were starting, this was a company that used to sell around $250 million per year. And in, two, in, by, in 2006 and in 2008 and nine, they were selling less than a hundred. So... We had to reduce a lot due to the to the crisis at that time. So I started looking for new ideas of what to what to do with my life. I already had two two kids by this uh, time, and uh, and we really enjoyed living in Spain. However, we need we needed to find either a job or a project that I would that I could keep um, working on. So a friend. Uh, that I had since um, since junior school called me and he said I'm living in Los Cabos and uh, in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, which is uh, the last point of the little arm of well the big arm that we have down California in in the coast coast of of, of California. It's a beach town, uh, very popular or very famous for uh, for uh, for a beach town no? for for vacations and uh, expats living down here so this he said this is a beautiful place uh and um i i i had visited cabo a few times before a couple of times but i would never imagine moving to a beach town uh, so i went visit and saw the opportunity and he said uh, there's a hospital need for this uh, beach town there's a lot of new houses, new developments, and and a lot of rich people from from the U.S., especially from from California, Colorado, and those places are uh, having a second home here. They're having an issue that uh, most of these people that are buying homes here are 60 plus, and they want health services. And the health services in this town were really, really poor. I mean, there were a few little hospitals, but that was it. So uh, my friend saw the opportunity and said, "Okay, I'm a builder. I know the place, and you're the you're 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 no more in finance. You have more experience. So let's write a business plan and let's do this." So I started in Spain writing during nights my business plan while I was still working, and. Started sending to a few people, a few funds that I people that I that I thought uh, it could interest in them. But it was it was it was very adventurous. This was around two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten. Um, the ecosystem for for private equity and investors in Mexico was really really small at that time, and um, also people understanding how hospitals worked was extremely uh, complicated even even for for bankers like there was this rule in mexico that um, bankers would not lend money to to schools or to hospitals because they said if you fail what am i what am i going to do with the with the with the patients or what am i going to do with the students so i'm going to buy a problem if you if your business is not successful so it was it was difficult for them to 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 make loans to to even to big hospitals. So we had this idea. Uh, we went and started visiting um, hospital operators because my friend was an engineer and I was a finance guy. We had no idea about healthcare, uh, but we saw this opportunity. So we started visiting different hospitals in the US and in Mexico 
to see if they had um, this vision of opening a branch of their hospital in Cabo. Uh, it was a difficult time, time after the crisis, like some of the hospitals in even in California, in the US were like, yeah, that'd be great, but this is not a really good time. Um, there were no, and there are still very few ventures of uh, US chains um, hospitals coming down to Mexico. Um, because every, as you know, in the US, every state has different laws for healthcare uh, the doctors cannot um, um, pursue their career in California and then move to to New York, for example, and 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 be a doctor there. They have to pass new exams and stuff like that. So in Mexico, it's the same thing. You cannot send U.S. doctors to Mexico and operate a hospital. You need to use the local um, doctors uh, because the 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 regulations are are really different. Correct. So we talked to around maybe seven or eight uh, hospital operators around around Mexico. And, and we started talking to one of the best hospitals in Mexico City, uh, which is called ABC Hospital, the American British Cowdery Hospital. And they were very enthusiastic about doing something here with us in Cabo. So we worked with them for maybe a couple of years, like in, in, in secret meetings with the CEO at the time. Because he couldn't, this ABC hospital is um, it's a non-for-profit hospital, and they have this board, uh, so they're very conservative. It's a hospital that's been around for more than 120 years, I think, and they're very um, um, conservative on how they grow. So the CEO had this vision of growing outside of Mexico, and he saw an opportunity working. He saw these two young guys, and he said, "Okay, let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on these guys." I'm gonna uh, sign this agreement, and then I'm gonna go sell it to my to my board to see if they want to to operate the hospitals. So we started working with them, um, building a more robust business plan. And at that point, we started looking for more money because we we had some angel investors, which I don't even I don't even think that name existed in Mexico at that time. The angel uh, investor, but. We got some loans from from family. My mother gave us a check. Um, different people started giving us a check, and then we were so overboard at some point that we we were like even either we 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 lose this money and we go with big faces to these people and say sorry we're we're out of money and we cannot go farther, or we keep digging and digging and digging until we find ground and then we start building building from from there so um at some at some point we got a we got a, a loan from um very important um uh, developer here in cabo and he said okay i'm gonna give you this loan so that you can keep working on this at that point i remember calling my wife and saying okay this is our last shot either we get this loan or we have I have no money for food or no money for the for for school payments or even the rent. So, but uh, thankfully everything came um, to its place and we got we got that loan and we had a little bit more time to to find for money. And this is when we started talking to uh, investors, more institutional investors and family offices around uh, the country. Uh, so we visited maybe. I don't know. We at some point we counted over 90, 90 um, visits that we had with different investors. Um, because at the beginning we were raising money for one hospital, and then we said it was very, it was a very small amount of money for institutional investments, but it was a large amount of money for family offices. So we wanted around five to ten million dollars, and it was in, investors would say no. It's uh, institutional investors would say it's too it's it's too little for us. We need tickets, um, bigger tickets to for us to to get interest. And the family offices were, I'm gonna give you one or two million, but I cannot give you five to ten million. So we were in a in a difficult position. And as I mentioned, nobody really understood how hospitals work, as you know. Um, uh, Private equity funds usually have a time lapse. No, they have ten years. They they raise the money and they have ten years to invest and and exit that that investment. 
and hospitals take a lot of, of time to recover the amount it's a it's a it's an investment it's a um it's it's a very big investment and it takes at least five years between you you start construction and operating to start to 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 make a hospital uh, break even right so you start making money after five years at least or uh, that that you 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 invested so for 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 institutional investors was quite quite a challenge to say I'm, i need to exit in seven to eight years and we're not going to make it at the end we ended um we ended up uh, meeting a very big in, um, uh, private equity fund, which which gave us an investment of around 30, 30 million at the time, plus a family office. So uh, we got a good match between between the family office and the and the investment um, or the private equity. So we, we we raised the money and we started building the first hospital here in Cabo, and then bought another hospital in Querétaro. We came up with this name, which was called H Plus H Plus Hospitals. At the beginning, it was called H Plus because it was it was going to be an um, a a co branding with the other hospital, which was ABC, and we wanted their brand, so it was called H plus ABC. So it was a co-branding. But when they started uh, operating our hospitals, the management between with, with, between the private equity fund and the hospital didn't really work. It was very hard and very different visions. So the, the private equity fund wanted to maximize their profit and whatever and do uh, things uh, cutting, not cutting costs, but really um, uh, taking care of of the money. While the other, the hospital, which was which is used to um, receiving um, um, how do you call them funds for not for free, but they they are non for profit, so they get they get funding from from charities or whatever. That it that their money sometimes it does not cost them anything, so they're used to to doing things bigger and I mean you you buy a machine and in the private equity or in your business you need to recover that money and in their model which was a donation you don't need to recover that money you just need to make money out of it but but it, it was different so uh, the different visions and stuff was was difficult to manage so we ended up splitting with with this hospital and we ended up creating our own brand and our own um, hospital operation team. So at that time, I decided, and they invited me to 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 be the CEO of the hospital in Cabo, which, as I mentioned, I had no idea how to manage a hospital or doctors or anything. So, but since this was my baby and this was the place that I want, I wanted to leave. So I said, okay, I, I I'll take the the challenge and I'll start this hospital from from scratch. So we operated. We built it. We operated. Um, we opened in 2015 after a terrible hurricane here that we had in in 2014, which was called Oville. Which we were almost finished with the whole construction, and then uh, a huge hurricane came and destroyed uh, the whole Cabo area and uh, very big parts of the hospital. So we had to refurbish. For six months, almost uh, all the finishings in the hospital, and then uh, open open the hospital by 2015. So we I managed that hospital for a few years, uh, until 2019. Yeah, a, bit, a few months before the pandemic uh, start started, um, and that's when I. Uh, that's when I start, started the, the group We Care. Gotcha. What was what was keeping you going? Like how did you just oh, keep I've, going? I've, it's it's interesting how um I loved this I loved working for, for for the hospital. It was an amazing job. We did a lot of things for the people, for the community. We did charities. At some point we were operating on or make doing a heart open open heart procedures for kids for free for uh, twenty kids a, a year, 
uh, you saw how it was amazing to see uh, the first baby that was born in the hospital, the first patient of whatever, because we didn't, everything was the first time for, for us. So the first baby that was operated with a, for a, a heart condition. Um, so all these things that you saw a really big change in the community, they, it Cabo was like a, it was like a, a a change in 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 our way of living here when the hospital was um a uh, was there because uh, for everything we had to go to mainland or somewhere else to get treated once this hospital was here and we had all the capacities for any kind of uh procedure accidents uh, heart attacks uh, brain surgeries and whatever it really changed the destination and people felt more safe uh, living down here or coming down here than than the the previous year. So this was um, changing the, the the community was my biggest my biggest drive. Um, money wise, it was quite interesting or uh, difficult because when you raise this kind of money as uh, that much money, uh, you become really you become like an employee, right? Because I, I I mean. I still had my shares, of course, but uh, I got so diluted that I was just a uh, very small, or we got so diluted we were just a small uh, fish in the in the whole investment, right? So you become you become again an employee of your own company, and it's difficult for you to make decisions. You need to go to 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 the to the to the private equity fund, and then to the board, and then to whatever, and so you are very uh, your hands are very tied on on what you can do, and that was very difficult for me because I worked a long long years before this, and I when I wanted to build this, says okay, I'm gonna do this to be to to make it my own company, and it I felt it like my company, but I was tied right. You cannot you could not take decisions by yourself. You had to, and, and there were really tough times when. Uh, my view was very different from the from the venture or the private equity fund, and we had d very difficult situations where uh, they had a view and I had another view. Um, so that was quite difficult. So that's why in 2019, at the end, uh, we got to to this agreement where I was stepping out as CEO. Uh, I would I would keep still kept my I was I was still part owner of course and I was in the board but on the board but but I could I was not taking uh, my day on day activities so that's when I started okay now I need to do something right and the and um, so this is when I started um, these two companies I saw the need in the in 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 the location as well to to have a pharmacy of 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 a quality pharmacy the the town is full of of cheap pharmacies that sell any kind of uh drug or even i don't know whatever um lots of americans and canadians come down here and buy drugs and they take them back but it, it's very uh, bad quality and uh and there were no no specialty pharmacies in in the whole area so um, I found my partner, which is an amazing woman. Her name is Karen. And um, I told her, okay, let's start doing this. You know about the pharmacy business because she was working with us for many years. You know how to get the suppliers. You know how to buy this this stuff. And I'll, I'm going to help you. And let's, let's put some investment and let's see if we can um, make a pharmacy, a real pharmacy, a specialty pharmacy it, to, to, for the community. So we started that company in 2019 at the end. And um, uh, it started growing really fast because the need was there. And um, then the, the, the COVID started and we were one of the few, um, one of the few businesses that were, able to operate or be open during this period and people were just crazy trying to buy you know masks and um and uh, liquid gels for for your hand sanitation and everything that they could because everything was closed and they couldn't go anywhere so we started uh growing and growing and she was able to get all these all these um products for for covid 
that this that gave us um, um, a big start and and helped us make money quite soon. My goal when building this new company was totally different from 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 H plus hospitals. When I wanted to do H plus hospitals, I wanted to do something really big. And I said, okay, let's do something, some project that it's that marks a a change in where we're gonna do it in any in whatever industry. But I wanted to do something big, so I, that's why I wanted to raise a lot of money and do something big. Uh, but but the hospitals didn't really make money until our till a few years ago. So so as an entrepreneur, is really. Uh, sometimes painful that you see your the business growing and growing but you only live out of your salary right so you don't have anything else maybe a bonus sometimes but you're not making any money out of this so when when i started the the, the pharmacies i said okay we need to start this business but we need to start making money in three months right so we need to we need to make this profitable from day one and that's how we build it that's how we started and and every time we grow we open a new pharmacy uh, we try to make that profitable until we go to to the to the next one. So we started that in in 2019 and in 2020. Um, we also saw this opportunity to start a clinic for which is called Weaker Health, which we could give this um, concierge kind of um, medicine. To all the expats and and or, or also Mexicans living down here, uh, where we could solve most almost all your 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 medical needs. If you need a, a general medicine uh, checkup, if you need to 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 schedule an appointment with a specialty doctor, um, if you need surgery, we'll find you the surgeon. Um, we'll find you all your all your medicines. We have uh, IV IV uh, cocktails for for your health. And the other big important thing that we required was a, a an oncology center. So there were no oncology centers here. So we have this great great um, oncologist uh, as a partner in the clinic. And uh, she was very enthusiastic of doing this with us. So we started also this oncology clinic. And uh, now we can treat patients down here for 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 their chemos or for the treatment. Sometimes they used to have to go to, to mainland or somewhere else or go back to the U.S. to get their chemo. And this is... Um, this is a really good place to have this treatment because it's a it's a beach town. It's nice. The weather is awesome. So people like coming down here to have their treatment. And uh, we have these beautiful facilities where they are treated not like in a hospital. They're treated more like if they were at home. They, we give you we give them a menu for for their lunch. They can come in and give them a massage. They have um, different kind of um services that they feel much more comfortable in a really nice uh clean and technological room so so where they can have their their treatments and there were non uh infusion centers down here so this this is the opportunity that we saw and and, and we started that in 20, 2020 by the end by the end of 2020 yeah that's so, super cool so it's it's been a long run what would you say is the biggest difference between healthcare in Mexico versus the United States? Is that something you're able to speak upon? Yes, 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 I can from first hand. Um, actually, the first, our first patient in the clinic was my wife. Uh, during the pandemic, she got she got uh, diagnosed with lymphoma. And uh, while we were building this clinic, so she was the first patient to be treated in the clinic with um with chemotherapy. So and this was by October of twenty twenty. Uh, she was treated down here with excellent doctors and and a really good protocol that we the that for for this um sickness, and then. After she was clean, after six six uh, sessions, she had to go for a session every three weeks. 
um, after six sessions, uh, almost six months after, she was she was clean and she she was fine. However, um, after the second uh, COVID vaccine, she she didn't she she got that night she got um, flu symptoms or or very bad symptoms after the the vaccine, and two weeks later. The, the symptoms were still there. She was still feeling uh, quite bad. So they they did another um, scan on her and and, uh, and the lymphoma came back. Um, I don't think it was caused by the, the vaccine, but I think as the vaccine gives you uh, some symptoms, your your body starts reacting to to like if you were sick, correct? So um her body started uh, building again bad uh, cells, cancer cells um, from from this reaction. So we st- we needed to to find another solution, and and uh, we are limited down here on what we can do. So we started looking for another option, and uh, it was either going to Mexico City or going to the U.S. After a few months, thanks to our insurance as well we got a, an appointment in at md anderson in 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 houston so she ended up being treated up there in in houston and and since then it's been two two uh bone marrow transplants that she did in in houston uh the last one was last year and so she's been now uh, more than a year Free of cancer or free of this lymphoma, so it was it was a really difficult um, years. But thankfully, to all this medicine and all this um, technology and the doctors, well, she's she's kicking and living and having a great life. But uh, the going back to your question, what what is the big big difference here in Mexico? Um, that the treatment, the hospitals are not that big. And the doctors are still very close to their patients. All right, they know you by name perfectly. They they give you your cell phone. Uh, they can stay with you an hour, an hour and a half uh, for your appointment. Um, you go to the hospital and they go visit you. They go. Uh, it's it's very it's a close relationship with your doctor and your and your and and the patient. In the U.S., however, it's quite. The opposite. You go there. You don't here in Mexico. You choose your doctor. Sometimes I mean, I want to go to this doctor in the U.S. You go to the system, this hospital, whatever, and they say, well, the the doctor that is available for this is Doctor X, and you're gonna be treated by Doctor X. And if Doctor X is on vacation, then you're gonna be treated by Doctor Y. And um, and sometimes if you go into the hospital and you don't see your doctor at all. She, you'll see your doctor when you go back to his or her um, office, but during the hospital, you're treated by another hospital, by another uh, doctor, the doctor that is in charge of, of, of the floor or whatever, but it's it's a really non-close um, relationship between the patient and the doctor. So that's a really, really big difference. Um, uh, it's... Not, I'm not saying one is better than the other. You just feel more pampered in Mexico than than in the U.S. Here, here, uh, the the nurses and the doctors are pamper much more the the patient than the, than in the U.S. Also, Sorry. here we have private private. And I'm talking about private medicine in Mexico. We also have public medicine, which is another um, a completely different system. There you go as well, and they'll give you whatever doctor and whatever services they can. But here, uh, if you go to private to a private uh, facility, then the relationship uh, it's much it's very different than in the U.S. As as like someone who doesn't live in Mexico, are we allowed to come use the hospitals down there? Like, how does that work? Of course, you're allowed. You obviously they they they're private hospitals, and they they you have to pay for them, or you have an insurance. So I my first recommendation coming down to Mexico to whatever you're gonna go, have a, a at least an um, 
a travel insurance for any any accident or illness that you have down here. People think that coming down here, uh, hospitals are, are very cheap and, and, and uh, medicine is really cheap. It is not. I can assure you that it is not cheap. Uh, so you're going to end up paying quite a lot of money if you don't have insurance. So you have to have travel insurance um, uh, coming down here. Got it. Cause I don't, I feel like I remember reading one time that like in Panama, they have like a John Hopkins there. And if you're like an American visiting, you get like free healthcare or something. Have you ever heard any, about that? I don't think they have free healthcare. Maybe if you're part of of the John Hopkins or that hospital in the U.S., you can be treated with 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 your same insurance, but it's not going to be free. I mean, it's not going to be free. even in the U.S. It's not free. Either you're part of your insurance, you have Medicare, or you have whatever, but it's not it's not free, right? You have to someone someone is paying for it, so you need to be part of a system to to be able to pay. And down here. I mean, there's a, the social security, which some people say, oh, no, if something happens, I'm an expat and I go to the just to the public hospital. But I mean, I don't think uh, the services, I mean, it's, it's it can be a really good service, but it's not easy also to get in. And uh, maybe you are, as a tourist, are um, used to something more fancy. And if you're used to 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 to, to facilities like in the States, you're going to need to go to a private facility and they're going to charge you. Yeah, there's no such thing as free, no matter where no, where you're at. Correct, correct. Well, awesome. I, I'm happy you came on. Uh, it was definitely a inspiring story. Uh, what's what's next for you, in terms of uh, uh, your next well, adventure? I, I, we we sold the hospitals um uh, a year ago, almost. Yeah, it's last September. So we're uh, I'm out of that that investment of H plus. So, uh, which was the plan. We we ended up selling it to a very large group uh, in Mexico that is growing hospitals all around the country and they ended up buying our two hospitals. Uh, and it was a quite, I think it was a good investment for the, for all the, for all the people involved. Uh, they, they, all of them got a, a good return on their, on their money all, uh, even after all these years. So um, now I want to keep growing this uh, pharmacy business and, and the clinics. The clinics is a little bit more difficult because you, you're more dependent on on services, on doctors and nurses and, and, and people. Um, the pharmacy, we, we've been working a lot on, on technology and uh, our purchasing power and our distribution so that we can start growing now. We're we're gonna open our ninth pharmacy uh, by the end of this week. So um, that's that's a business that I think during the next year will keep us busy and we're we're gonna keep growing that that area. And as I mentioned, uh, this is like a it's a bootstrapping business, which is very very different than operating a, a business with a with a private funds or with with uh, with venture capital guys. So. I'm happy because we can make our own decisions. We can make our own mistakes, but all we all all always focusing on on making a profit and a good life for all our um, our employees and people that 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 depend on us. Yeah, that's what it's all about: creating win win for everyone, putting your heart into something you believe in, and then just never giving up. So, thanks for coming on, and we'll see everyone next time. Bye, guys.